everyone today I'm going to show you how to use Shopify's flash list which helps you build performance lists inside your Re Expo React Native apps or just your normal React Native apps so um, you can install it for Expo or React Native um, just CLI but I'm just doing Expo so I'll just show you the installation you're just using that npx Expo install command and then you can go, go ahead and import flash list from Shopify slash flash list. Um, there's also other types of lists you can Im um, import, which one of those is masonry. Um, and basically what that is, is kind of like a grid style layout where the items are of different sizes and it sort of makes it look quite good. Um, if you're wanting to see that, I can do it in another video, just comment below. So I'm just gonna basically set up some very simple data here. If this was a real app, you'd go ahead and in your use effect hook, you'd go and load data from an API, um, but I'm happy to just use some dummy data here. Then inside my view, I'm going to want to go ahead and create my flash list. It's got a few different properties that I need to pass to it. So one of them is the actual data that's going to be displayed. Another is how you're going to render the component, the data inside a component. And another is the estimated size, which it uses to calculate, um, calculate how many it should prepare in advance and when it should start reusing old, um, components. So if you want a bit of detail on what the best estimated size is, I'll link that in the description below. The um, flash list documentation gives you a few examples, but they also say you can just, if the items are of similar size, just go ahead and inspect them using the um, element inspector and get the height or width, depending on whether it's a horizontal or vertical um, flash list. And then from there, you can um, choose the lowest one is best if you're un unsure. Um, but if you've got lots of different sizes, you want to get an average size. Or if they're roughly the same, you can just choose that size and use it. I'm going to change this view to a safe area view. Um, that's because I wanted to use this on iOS and it's sort of showing up off screen, as you can see. And you may have seen me remove a few properties from the um, container style earlier and that's just because those are required um, those are basically required to be removed to show the flash list otherwise it doesn't display correctly it thinks that it shouldn't be of any height so I've just used that element inspector there to get the height and so I'm going to adjust this estimated item size to reflect what size I think would be more appropriate there's a few other cool things you can do, like you can um, create your own headers, footers, dividers, um, and you can um, do stuff like that. So I'm just going to show you a few things here. You might even want to provide um, a list empty component. So basically, when your list is empty, this is what's going to display. It allows you to just customize your list. So I'm just going to display some text here. Just hiding that element inspector so it looks a bit clearer. I'm just going to show you an empty list here. And when I have an empty list, it says list is empty. So now that I've shown you that, I'll go back to that data that I had earlier. And I'm going to show you a few different components you can add, like a header and a footer. I'm going to link the documentation to the flash list below. So if you're wanting to see what else you can do, just check in the description below. Another thing you can do is sort of have a refresh control. So when you pull down, it, it gives you the option to refresh and load data. Um, so yeah, that's another thing you can do. Um, and I'm going to set a list header component as well. I'm just going to say that this is my header. 
um, basically the same as my footer, just really simple to show the how you do these sorts of things. Cool, so you can see my header and my footer and my data there. Now that I've done that, I'm just going to show you um, something that's really important to take note of when you're rendering your components. So I'm going to create my little component as a separate inside a separate um, separate file, and basically I'm going to use state here. Um, it's not recommended to use state because when the um, components are reused, it will pick up sometimes that um, existing state. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you here. First off, I'm just going to make sure that I've got my flash list using this component. So I'm just going to keep it really simple. It's just going to return that text with that um, item name. So I'm going to pass the item as a property. And I'm just going to reference that property inside that text component. So basically, inside that um, text component, I'll show that name will basically be the exact same as it looks currently. I just need to change that render item to use my new component. So you can see that render item, I'm just going to basically um, say that I want to use that my list item component. I'm going to pass item as a property. And you can see that looks the same. So now I can go ahead and add some state to my application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to include a view which is going to wrap around my text and a counter. And I'm also going to have a button that will allow me to increment the counter. Um, and basically, you'll see that when I scroll down, um, items that I haven't incremented the count for have a count more than what they should have because it's reusing the same components and that's just for efficiency so yeah I've also imported use state so I can use state so I've got my state variable count here and I've got my um, setter for that state variable and I'm going to use state and set that to a default value of zero then I'm going to go ahead and just create a view as my root component and inside that I'm going to have the text and the button. So for that text, once again, that's the props.item.name and I'm also going to have a text that shows my count. And then I'm going to finally need a button that will set that count so that I can increment the count. So I'll give that a title of increment count. And on press, I'll go ahead and set that count. So I'm just going to increment it by one. So I'm setting it to count plus one. When I go ahead and save, I should see my um, new component there, and you can sort of see that. And if I were to click increment count, it would increase that count for an individual list item. But I want to show you how state having state in your component affects um, later data. So I'm just going to add a few more data points here so that's off the screen. Just giving these different names so it's really easy for me to identify them as different ones. And I'm going to go ahead and increment the count of a few items. So you can see John Smith 
um, and A have a count. I'm just going to add a few more items here just so that I can show it because the ones on screen haven't, um, haven't hit that issue yet. Okay, so now if I scroll, I've got my ones with the count, and then when I get to L, you can see I've got another one that has a count, even though I haven't pressed increment count on L. So it's using that state from that John Smith as it's reusing that component. If I add another um, few in there, you should see that N has a count of one because A has an account of one, and there's a diff one spot difference between L and N. So you can see that L has a count of two and N has a count of one, much like the um, previous components. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All my code will be available on GitHub.